What's up ladies and gentlemen, once again I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Today I want to talk a little bit about data hoarding, digital hoarding. If you know me, you know that I got my server set up full of copywritten materials that I might not necessarily have paid for. And there's many more like me. However, I've never seen anyone do it on quite the level that I have. So, I got a movie server, and I have beside that is my music server. And what else I got on there? My pictures. My family pictures, too. So, I think I have about mm, 5 gigabytes within there. It's been a long time since I've used it. You see, as many of you know, not many people are downloading anymore. Torrents aren't as easy as they used to be. I do have a VPN, so I'm not worried about getting caught. But these days, we can stream this content without a problem. And is it wrong? Technically, yes. You know, technically, it's illegal. And maybe we shouldn't be doing this. But at the same time, there is such a monopoly going on right now, even now, when it comes to music, when it comes to movies, and I swear to God the people pushing out the music wanted one hit wonders just so you go out and buy one CD for 20 to 30 bucks back in the day. The prices were unreasonable, the prices had to come down, and while I understand people need money, they don't need quite as much money as they were making. They definitely don't need as much. So technology keeps advancing. And geez, I have a really awesome camera on my cell phone now. I Maybe maybe in 1985 they had the technology that I have on my cell phone. So, you know, the price has got to come down. And if the prices don't come down, the market's going to figure it out for itself. And you know what? It did. So over here, I have thousands of movies. Thousands. Some I haven't even watched, some I never will watch, but it's something I wanted. And let me tell you why I started. When I just moved out, I was buying my DVDs like everybody else. And all of a sudden, some idiot breaks into my place. It was a friend of mine. Friend. And this guy, uh, this guy was addicted to meth. I'm telling you, if you have any friends addicted to meth, you change your locks. You don't talk to them. You don't let them know if you have anything that is easy to pawn. That is easy to sell elsewhere. Um, yeah. Meth. Not even once, guys. Anyways. So I had such a hard time with the insurance companies. Because I had renter's insurance. It didn't help me out much. At the end of the day, I think I got 500 bucks from like $3,000 worth of stuff being stolen. And that taught me to be very careful about what kind of stuff you keep. What kind of stuff you keep, who knows what stuff you keep, and who knows when you're away. Because, man, they'll break into your house so quick if they're, uh, if they're at all drugged up on meth. But anyways, because I didn't get much money from the insurance company, I was like, screw this. I'm going to get all my stuff off. I think it was LimeWire at the time. Anyway, shortly after that, I was introduced to BitTorrent. And uh, it's pretty much all history from there. So, yeah. Nobody's downloading anymore. Nobody's downloading anymore. The Pirate Bay, while well, the Pirate Bay may still have uh, torrents that are teenagers, they, they don't have so many people downloading for various reasons. Like in Canada, the ISP has to warn you if you've been caught. The ISP has to send you information, and that scares a lot of people. And because of that, we don't have so many downloaders unless you use a VPN. But still, it's a lot easier to go to Cody because you won't get pinched for Cody. Everybody else will get pinched. But even after all that, even after all that, you think, what about what about ebooks? What about comic books? What about uh, what about music? And you know, we can stream this stuff. These days, we can stream music from YouTube, and that's what a lot of people seem to do. They get apps that save things off YouTube. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, got a bit of a cold. People stream apps that are off YouTube, and people s save stuff off YouTube. MTV isn't what it used to be because uh, corporations don't have a lock. Corporations don't have a lock on music anymore because of how much technology is advanced. I use these things so rarely. Eventually, I did start buying DVDs again and Blu-rays, and I have a big shelf upstairs full of DVDs and Blu-rays I never watch. But really, you do have to support the industry. I had to support the industry because I started realizing I had a lot of family that, that are or were in the industry. And even when it comes to books, I might have told you the story once, but um, a friend of mine's mother, who was an artist, broke up from her husband, and she wasn't doing too good for money. 
I don't think she was making a whole lot of money, and she told me, Nevin, you gotta you gotta support the artist because there's some there's some weeks that I get checks in for residuals that that that's how I that's how I afford milk, and if it wasn't for that, my children wouldn't have had milk. And she was an author. She made uh, not an author, sorry, an artist, and she made children's books. But it did underline the issue: these people have to eat. Now, at the same time, maybe these artists don't need gold-plated bathtubs. Maybe, maybe, maybe they don't all need Lear jets. Maybe, maybe the the recording industry doesn't need as much cocaine as they got going through their veins. But yeah. I think we changed the industry, guys. Anyways, again, nobody uses this stuff anymore. I have it. My idea was basically to be a hoarder. I didn't want to download as much movies as I did. I wanted to download ebooks. And uh, I knew at one point that whatever I downloaded wouldn't amount to anything after a certain amount of time. And we're getting there. You see, videos are updating. So the stuff I have here is really shitty quality compared to some of the... It's not 4K, let's say. And, uh, MP3s. They're MP3s. They're lossy. They don't sound very good. The ROMs that I have... I might as well download or delete all the ROMs and emulators I have and update them because the ones that they have these days are a lot more stable than the ones I downloaded about 5-10 years ago. And the ebooks, well, they're ebooks, but they're not really compatible with everything. If you want to read them on your computer, but really, who wants to read a book? Who wants to read a novel on a computer? Not all of them go very well with every device you have. So am I going to get rid of them? No. They're there. They're hooked up. They work. They do what I need them to. When I need them to. But honestly, these days, all I really use them for is uh, to save my photos, my family photos. That's it. And still, if there's something I really want on there, I can jump on. But yeah, that's pretty much seems to be the rise and fall of digital downloading, hoarding data. I'm going to do it forever. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for me. Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Have a good one, folks.